Thank you. I just realized that uh, between the prior presentation and the next presentation, I'm literally the bathroom break between two sports events. So I hope you'll bear with us uh, as we uh, have some fun. Uh, so just a little bit of, uh, of background here, if I, if I can go back. Oh, it looks like I'm just going to slow. A little bit of background about Carton Design. Uh, industrial design firm on the uh, west side of Los Angeles. Uh, we work in the tech space as well as the consumer space. Um, and we heard a lot this morning about the power of narrative, about the power of focusing on people, um, and about the uh, power of storytelling and uh, connecting it to our lives. Uh, for anybody who's not initiated into product design, that is user-centric design, and that's what we practice at, at Carton Design. And in the practice of doing so, we do things like following people around and asking them questions and interviewing them to try to get those insights that will really drive products that they're going to be able to use well and love. Um, and in the course of doing that, we do things like following them to work, following them home, following them into their closets at home, and even following them into their bathrooms at home. So what's so interesting about the bathroom? Well, to us, it's, uh, it's a myriad of things. First of all, it's one of the only things you interact with from uh, birth all the way through death, all stages of your life. Um, you do it in private, for the most part, unless you have a nine-year-old like I do. Um, and you're interacting with that space, with the bathroom, multiple times a day. It's a, it's a, it's a constant in an ever-changing life, uh, and one with not so much privacy. Now, how does technology fall into the, into the bathroom? It's an interesting space, right? Um, we're starting to see technology find its way into our homes. We've got automatic door locks now. We've got technology turning up the heat for us. We've got technology adjusting the light for us. And now we start to see technology coming into our homes to address healthcare issues, uh, be it uh, watching your weight, helping you watch your glucose, uh, and even now doing blood testing in home. So some pretty interesting things coming into the home. Combine that with some pretty interesting developments in artificial intelligence, uh, algorithms. Um, these uh, th these uh, technologies and these, uh, these uh, things that are being researched are finding their way um, to, to even further into our, into, into our lives. Um, but we really want to look beyond the bathroom as a place where uh, tech is coming in, um, not just as a a conglomeration of a bunch of uh, smart devices, all perhaps talking to each other, but just uh, analyzing different features of us and sending this information out to the cloud. But go back to this idea of uh, personification and think about the bathroom as actual uh, character in our lives, much more like a teacher or a coach or a caregiver than just a combination of uh, technologies. And think about it in terms of our own life stories, the narrative of our lives, and the different points within our lives across common life stages. We all share these life stages. And we're excited to just show you a vision of how the bathroom of the future might become the health hub of the home in a couple of these different life stages. And let's start with a difficult one. Adolescence, 12 to 17. Um, a lot of us use the bathroom throughout our adolescence as uh, a bit of a respite from, uh, from life. Um, you know. There were a lot of things happening. There were grooming habits that we needed to pick up on. There were body changes. There were lots and lots of questions that we didn't have anybody to ask about. And so many of us faced the scourge of acne alone, one of those things we had nobody to talk about. But the bathroom of the future will be able to give at least our grandkids uh, information that we may have been lucky to collect along the way from dermatologists like Acne is not caused by bad hygiene. Acne is not caused by potato chips. Sorry, mom. Uh, it's caused by hormone levels changing, which affects oil production in the skin, which in turn uh, causes bacteria buildup, and, and that's where the issue lies. So imagine a bathroom in the future that could be a teacher of sorts that you never had, uh, a mirror with embedded cameras in it that could show you, could image your face via infrared, Pick up problem areas on your skin. Use augmented reality to show that back in context on your skin to be able to give you the tips, the tricks, uh, to be able to take care of your skin in a personalized, personalized way, and perhaps even give you a venue for asking those questions that you really have nobody else to, to ask in your adolescence. You can imagine the bathroom of the future also giving you tools, like any good teacher does, uh, a means uh, on the left of, uh, of something that actually uh, provides the best environment for your skin, uh, for good skin care, 
uh, something that could actually give you personalized prescription um, for your personal needs, maybe even higher tech instruments that would deliver blue light to kill that bacteria that's causing acne. And a great feature would be the bathroom in the future will deliver that information in whatever the best context is, but it's one-to-one, -one, it's to you in the context of use, uh, when and where you need it. So imagine a, a projection here that's not only giving you some information about your progress, but giving you a little bit of history into the cycle and a little bit of forethought as if to say, yeah, that breakout will be okay by prom. Okay, so survived adolescence, we all did it, it can happen. Moving on to the next life stage. Um, so you've, you've survived, you've gotten through school, you've gotten a job, and, and perhaps you're starting to think about uh, starting a family in your early adulthood. The bathroom of the future is gonna understand what, uh, what doctors will tell you if you talk about uh, the challenges they go through with young couples starting a family, that it is not only a fantastic experience, but also a challenging experience at the same time. Lots of stuff to start tracking, um, cycles to be watching, uh, metrics to be watching over. It's a, it's a, a load of responsibilities. Uh, if you speak to an OBGYN, they'll tell you a lot of the time that they spend with couples is as a coach. It's really coaching them through uh, helping them to understand what some of the struggles are, counseling them uh, in many ways over months and sometimes even years as they try to conceive. So you can imagine the bathroom in the future can use the toilet to be watching and starting to build that information uh, about cycles, menstruation cycles, and, and preparing for the understanding of those cycles for conception. So by analyzing basal body temperature and combining that with LH in the urine, your toilet will be able to track and build those cycles in a much more accurate way than someone who's maybe just started tracking those cycles upon the time that they decided to conceive. So when it's time to uh, make a concerted effort to conceive, that information will be available uh, to them. Then you could, the toilet of the future will be able to send messages. This could be anything from tips and tricks to, to coaching to both partners, equally important, that there's, there's often two people in the equation here in whatever the means that makes most sense for them. Even if it's just positive affirmations, you're in this together and you know, everybody's been through this. This might take a little while, but uh, stick with it. And pregnancy arrives with its own set of, of challenges and, uh, and issues. Um, but the bathroom in the future could be able to use um, hydrostatic uh, measurements and analysis in the tub to be able to actually give a more accurate uh, vision to the uh, mom to be about her body composition, not just weight, um, could uh, conceivably be tracking along and informing on uh, the uh, point in the process uh, that the couple is, and maybe even reporting back uh, the growth of the fetus. Uh, in, in more detail than just the periodic uh, visits to the sonogram. But beyond just all the tech aspects, we're excited about the idea that the bathroom in the future could actually be reconfigurable, to, to physically move and change with us as our needs move and change. So imagine if the sink was reconfigurable to drop to the height where it could be used while someone's suffering from morning sickness because, as everyone knows, the toilet is the last place you want to be when you're nauseous. Uh, if light could be reconfigured and tuned to be able to deal with sensitivity that causes headaches, um, and you can imagine all of the, the implications that come along with that uh, ever-growing baby bump and how the physicality of the space should be able to change accordingly. The longest life stage then that we find ourselves in and hopefully are, have prepared ourselves well from with, with good habits and uh, elimination of bad habits becomes late adulthood. Uh, and here's where the bathroom just really starts to work as a caregiver and has the benefit of time uh, as, it, as its advantage. Doctors know that one of the biggest issues um, with tracking the health of their patients is just getting them in for screenings. Um, they understand it's a hassle. Nobody wants to go to the doctor. They don't want to go once a year. Uh, they barely go once every couple of years. Um, and that makes it really difficult to uh, screen and look for early onset issues when there's enough time uh, for them to have really good outcomes. But the bathroom will be there every day shower will be scanning for body changes, even for changes in hygiene. Uh, the toilet can check for things um, even in your feces to be able to uh, find the earliest on uh, markers for colon cancer before, um, before they'd even be noticeable by eye. Your floor could have uh, the ability to not only take 
weight measurements, but imagine if it's checking um, your balance and doing a gait analysis so that it can prevent things like falls, which we know are uh, a huge issue uh, with elderly people in the bathroom. Um, perhaps even moisture sensors to be able to uh, alert someone before there's a slip and fall accident. And the mirror, as an amazing sort of two-way magic mirror, could, uh, could not only be using um, uh, artificial intelligence to be able to uh, to track, but measuring using HD cameras and facial recognition to be able to watch for early onset things uh, in terms of tremors uh, and, and providing neurocognitive tests along the way to also be checking up on us in the background just as we go about our normal day-to-day -day routine. We think, though, that probably the biggest power and the, and the best vision of the bathroom in the future really is as a caregiver, uh, as a as a personified helper that's really working in the background, managing by exception, letting us live our lives uh, as we want to live them, um, and just being a portal to be able to connect us when it's appropriate to those professional caregivers, uh, support networks, more information as we need it and only when we need it. Um, and you can imagine, uh, you know, statistics say that uh, we'll probably be taking six to eight prescriptions over the course of our uh, late adult lives. Um, one out of three uh, elderly patients find themselves in the ER because of uh, drug interactions or, or drug issues. Uh, but the bathroom of the future will be able to see inside your medicine cabinet, connect you to uh, your health data, to, uh, to your physician uh, overseeing this, and could potentially either prompt you to toss out that expired prescription that you shouldn't be taking anymore, watch for drug interactions, or even perhaps in the future, reformulate and deliver prescriptions uh, specific to your needs on demand right there only for that day, day-by-day -day prescription. So we love, love this conference, love the ability to see all of these different perspectives, the technologies that are emerging, uh, the different perspectives and, and how people are going about doing this. Uh, but I think um, our hope is that we will work together to focus on what the real goal and the real sort of happy ending to this story really is, which is not a relationship with technology, but rather technology working for us in the background to enable us all to have great days and more of them. So enjoy the rest of yours. Thank you. Thank you, Eric.